I'm not sure I like this look. But we're going to go ahead with it because otherwise it'll be tomorrow and the next day and the next day before I record. So hello and welcome back to the No Excuses podcast. I think I'm... Hello and welcome back to the No Excuses podcast. My name is Anne and I live in the middle of Worcestershire with my husband Tom. Today is Wednesday the 31st of July. <clears throat> and that means it's August already tomorrow. Uh-uh. You may notice that I look a bit different today, and that's because I've got a new camera. So let's see how it turns out, shall we? The um, little GoPro that I bought last year or the year before to record on, is it runs out of battery quickly, and but it's okay. I mean, it's not so easy to upload sometimes, but it's okay. It does the job. But I bought a new phone this week because my um, not-so-old one, I think I've only had that about two years, is playing up. So this is an experiment, sort of. I know I look a lot closer to the screen that I want to be, and normally I can alter the um, the width of the viewing angle so that it looks like I'm a bit further away and I can show you things. But we'll see how we get on. And all that is an explanation, because you know I like explaining things. How are you? Today is a very, very warm day, and I have got two layers on. So I might be talking very quickly in order to get this top layer off. But I made this, so I wanted to show you. But it looks like... <laughs> it looks so oversized, and it is. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Everything I talk about should be down below um it's got more and three dots uh, it is on the systems i use so if you want to see uh, follow the links to anything i talk about like patterns and wool i put all direct links in there you just click on them and it should take you to the websites uh, and also there's details more details about how you can take part in the current make-alongs speaking of which we have craft war in 24 and that is something that is new to you. So if you're generally a knitter and a crocheter and you decide to do some spinning or weaving or anything, woodworking, build a shed, then pop it in there. It's something that sort of um, you might know a little bit about, but you've only dipped your toe in the water and um, you've done a bit more. Of. I'm not going to be ultra strict, but if I can see you're a knitter and you're entering knitting things, then I'm not sure that'll be allowed. And the second one is the bigger the better. And that is where you have a group of items that are all the same thing, i.e. a group of hats or socks or a jumper and a blanket or a bag that weighs more than 400 grams in total. The blanket or any item or the, or the jumper even or the cardigan doesn't have to be finished as long as you've got more than 400 grams in your project at the point that you enter it into the mail. And with both of my mails, I should have put the hashtag for Instagram on the screen. And you can enter on Instagram using those hashtags. But please put at Sparnits in as well. Otherwise, I can't always see it. Even if I do the exact wording for the hash uh, tag, it doesn't always come up. Um, uh, you can enter via Ravelry, there is a thread for both of these on Ravelry, or you can email me as people do, and I'll enter it into my spreadsheet for you. Both of these mails will end at the end of September, so you've got two months, and then um, we will start another mail, and the winners will be receive a wonky bag and a few more bits and pieces from me, and I am happy to post anywhere in the world. Thank you very much for entering, those of you who already have. And if you're getting near and you want to enter, get your entries in. But you've got about eight weeks. <clears throat> last time I mentioned the bags for charity that I've done the last few years. And you've been so, so supportive. And I've got a few orders from you this time as well. If you didn't catch me last time, um, I'm going to do, just do 
bags this time for the Stroke Association. They'll be so the package itself will be less expensive. And if you want to buy from um, over the pond or over the ocean, then as long as you're happy to pay the difference in price between postage in the UK and the postage to you, I'm more than happy to post it out to you. Um, I've made one bag already, not necessarily for the charity to do, I might use it for the giveaway. Uh, and I'm looking forward to making some more because I have got a lot of nice material. So, let's get on to what have we done. I have finished in the last three weeks nothing knitted. But I've finished this. This, and I'm not going to show you any photographs because I am not suitably dressed. Make of that as you will. Uh, but I will eventually put some photographs up. This is the Matchy Matchy, that's the name of the company, collage top. Basically, it's some very simple shapes that you sew together and you make a very loose fitting top. Now, I have made this with just with the help of Mom for the neckline and I'm still not sure it's sitting right. But because I'm wearing it over a t-shirt, I can't really tell. It has got... Uh, gathered sleeves and I'm not sure wearing it now will determine whether I turn these sleeves up a bit more because I've already taken quite a bit of um, fullness out of them from the pattern I did that even if you know just by looking at them uh, I decided that they were going to be too full for me and also a bit of length because I am short sleeved now I am short sleeved I've got short arms the pattern itself it's a drop shoulder design. I don't know if you can see, if I can point out the... Get me a pointy stick. Pointy stick, come here. The... Um, that is where one panel starts and finishes and another panel starts and finishes about there. So you get a centre front panel, you get a side panel which has got gathers further down, but I'm not going to pull back and show you. It's a bit awkward today. Um, very, very simple to sew. And um, and it's the same on the back. So it's very, very easy. If you're looking for something that's quite... Da -da -da, I started conducting now. Look. Don't put anything in my hands because I will fiddle with it. It's very easy to sew. We measured me and we decided to do the 5XL, which is quite big. And I think it's too over oversized for me. And we're either going to take some out the centre panel or the side panels. And I will put some, it won't be this time because I want to get this uploaded to you. But when I wear this, and I'm looking forward to wearing it, without anything underneath, you know, not a t-shirt anyway. Um, I'll get time to take some pictures of me fully dressed and we can. you will see what I mean. But it's ridiculously big. Now, it might look slightly better if the gingham was a bit smaller, maybe. I don't know. But I'd recommend the pattern. It's um, only a few shapes to cut out. Very simple. All straight lines, mostly, with a bit of gathering that you have to do. And, of course, I could cope with that. Now, you can see, really, that the this neckline is still tipping over, even though I... This neckline is strange. Normally, on a neckline, you'd have a facing or you'd have a bias that you could see. This is a bias that is hidden. So for this fabric, you've got three thicknesses of bias cut tape. Same fabric as I um, cut this out of. You've got that hanging on to one thickness of the top and the way you attach it. Um, it's quite simple, it's okay, it fits, you know, but somehow I'd stretched it and it did look quite bad when I sewed it on. So I gave it to my lovely seamstress, tailoress mother, and she's flattened a lot of it out for me and she tacked it. And today I've sewn it on and I still think it's tipping forward slightly, but I don't know that whether it will show as much. You probably can't see it, but I'm aware of it. Whether it's too heavy... Yeah, you know, the bias is pulling the uh, the top forward. Mum said she'd make a face in when I, if I do it next time. Those of you who don't do sewing, I'm sorry. I'm about to stop talking about it. But yeah, I'm really pleased with it. And I will be making another one out of um, 
a ditzy print, I think, at some point. So I've got some walking and I've got a navy blue, but I don't know what that's going to turn into yet. But I'm quite keen all of a sudden to make some of my own clothes. Put the stick down, eh? So that's my top. And if I suddenly disappear, it's because I've fainted in the heat. <laughs> because it is very, very warm. But progress. Well, I have made some progress. Something has gone, not awry, but something has changed in my head and I've cast it on new things in the middle of the year when I already have the 12 cast-ons to do, which I did nine of, I think, this year. I can't remember offhand. But I keep casting things on. I see some wool in the drawer that isn't in the loft. I mean, luckily, I can't see that all the time. And I think, I want to use that. And I get it out and I start knitting on it. So why have you cast something else on when you're enjoying the other things? Not that I don't want to make them. But. So, you saw last time that I cast on a new big love with the um, wool that Maggie had gave me, the BC Garn Humbleton. And then in my drawer I had these two skeins. Uh, this is Core, K-H-O-R, and it's a merino and silk. by Black Elephant and this doesn't have a name it doesn't have a, a colourway name but it's a nep, a Donegal nep and it's from Olan who I think have stopped dying from what I could gather because I went and had a look if I could find the colourway online but she's got if you look at the colourways available on Ravelry there's a couple that are very similar to this so she obviously likes this sort of ochre green colour well, they were sat in the drawer, and I thought, ooh, I think they go. Now, I wanted to make the Cornish thrift shawl that Sal's made. I oh, Sal, but I needed another skein. You need three skeins for that. So I've cast on another shawl, and this is called the Exordium Shawl, and it's by Rebecca Pico, or Pico. And you start out with garter, and you can see the colours coming out there from the black elephant yarn. And then you do stripes, and then you do a lovely slip stitch, well, cluster pattern. And now I'm doing the garter in the nep. And then that will, I've nearly finished that. I should finish that section tonight. And then I get. I think we go back to this one again, which is really, really pretty. And I'm enjoying that. So I put the details hopefully on the screen and it takes one skein of each roughly and I took it to the pub with me to knit on nearly two weeks ago now and my friend Jeanette said oh that's a lovely ochre colour I said right well, you can have it when I'm finished because I love knitting shawls but I've got so many that I need to give some of them away and it gives me an excuse to cast something else on. Now this it was a gift from Sophie. So thank you very much, Sophie. It's gorgeous. Oh, definitely my colour, isn't it? Doesn't match the other greens. Well, I suppose it, it does in a way. Same, similar tone. But yeah, very nice. And I'm pleased with that. Uh, what else have we done? Well, I... I finished my ochre cardigan, which I blocked yesterday, and I'm quite pleased with that. I need to take some photographs of it. But, you know, who wants to go near any woolies at this moment in time with us moaning about it being so hot all of a sudden? I... Um, my mum tried it on. She said, well, I like the look of that, because it's, it's quite a nice, lightweight cardigan uh, by Amber O'Brien. And I don't know whether I told you this last time, but I gave my mum a series of blue yarns a probably two or three years ago, and she was going to knit herself a full ply cardigan out of these yarns. I took them back, I confiscated them from her because she hadn't done anything with them, so I'm just trying to see if I've got... 
the same thing there, show you all of these. I confiscated them back off her and I said, I'll make you a cardigan. And the colours were similar to the shawl I've just done for Elaine. Well, in fact, three of the, those three colours were part of the wool that I gave to Mom. So now I've got a lot less of those colours, haven't I? Because I knitted that shawl. But I did have a full skein of this. Which is Hyacinth by Mothy and the Squid. And it's gorgeous. It's got dark green, a bit of lilac. Um, and mainly blue and tiny, tiny orange speckles. Bought that at Wonderwall last year, 2023. Maybe I did, maybe Mum's only had the wool the year then. I'll let her off. I forgive you, Mother. And then, of course, you've got the colours from um, Shawla Made Elaine. None of the pale. Um, I put that away, but there is a bit of it in here. You'll see in a minute. That's the middle colour, and that's the darker colour. And that's also got flecks of dark green in, so it comes together really well with that hyacinth colourway, and they go well together. It's interesting to see the difference when you look at them in real life and you look at them on a camera, and you all different lights when the sun's out and things. Sometimes they look very, very similar in tone, but you can see a distinct difference there. But I didn't have quite enough now because I've because I'd given the wool to that other shawl, I was a bit worried that I was going to run out of um, enough wool to sort of fade from one colour into another. So I went on to Wool Warehouse and I bought three balls of the Shepsies, Sheps, well, yeah, you know, Metropolis, which is a 75-25 wool, and it's lovely and soft. Um... I don't think it's such a high twist as the higher things or the other walls I've got. And I'm just going to show you the colours. I don't know which is which anymore. So that's a pale blue. Slightly turquoisey, greeny blue. And then a lilac. Now my camera is sort of, you know, when I show the colours it's going light and dark a bit so I don't know how it's going to show up on the video so those are all the colours I haven't introduced all the colours yet into the cardigan but if I can hold this up you know how bad I am at holding things up I'll show you the progress I've made so at the top we've got the original colours that I had for the shawl uh, the palest colour there with that and then I've split for the arms. I introduced the hyacinth. You can see where the, the darker blobs of dark green are. That's from the hyacinth. And I mixed it with a blue initially. And then as you go further down, I'm mixing it with the um, lilac. And I'm quite pleased with that. So um, I've got about, let's see, a couple of inches to it, nearly three inches from the armhole down now and it needs to be about 10 mum may want it I'm, I'm going to do about 8 and get her to try it on but she tried it on for the armhole depth and wanted a little bit more than what the pattern called for um, I'm doing her two sizes down from me whereas in reality she's about 10 sizes down from me um, yeah so it's quite a, an easy pattern an easy pattern to do um, you, you almost you do a sort of almost line by line um, chart, not chart, not not a chart with squares on, like you'd read a knitting chart for stitches, but um, a written out, a bit like Helen Stewart does for her knits, uh, telling you what to do on what row for the raglan increases. So if you're looking for a top down, lightweight summer cardigan, I'd recommend it. So yes, that's the ochre cardigan for mom. And I'm hoping that I might get to at least finish the body the next time I see you. I haven't done a lot of knitting. Um, it's been a bit warm. I'm getting warmer and warmer. 
Mind you, I, have drink, I am drinking coffee as well. Um, but I'm pleased with the way that's going. She tried it on on Friday before I introduced it, introduced the lime, I was going to say then. Lilac. <laughs> and she was happy with it, so. I'm getting red in the face as I eat up. So that's the progress I've made. I haven't done any other knitting and I've only done this sewing and the project bag, which obviously I'm not going to show you. So I've shown you, um, so that means we're easily onto incoming. Well, after last month, I don't think it's a good idea for, for me to have gone mad again, but I have got some incoming, of course I have. But those three balls, they're 50 gram balls, the Metropolis, from War Warehouse. And then while I was on there, I noticed that um, Drops still had their sale going. So I bought some kids' silk. Because um, I like doubling it up with things. Fluffy things. Fluffy. Yes, Ginny, fluffy again. And this is almond. I've wound them up because I find it easier to work from when they're pre when I've wound them up especially if you're dealing with two yarns together so that's almond and it's nice it's a nice brown it's looking redder on the screen there than it is in real life perhaps a bit better come back here my screen's flashing trying to find the colour but yeah it's just a a dullish brown it's not yeah not too rich anyway i bought um five of them <laughs> just to be sure and i did wonder i know i bought some other fluff to go with the dark brown titicaca that i had from holst but i'm thinking that would go quite nicely with it or no oh, there's another one that i bought whole super soft see i've got too much but yeah i bought that um as a sort of, I think it was £3.20 a ball. Well, when you consider, compare it to something like Rowan's Kid Silk Haze. I don't know whether it's worth the extra money for me. I bought Kid Silk Haze for my love note and I'm really pleased with it. It is softer, definitely softer than the drops. But whether it's worth twice or three times the price, the jury's out. And I have got something else to show you as well. Um, following on from my obsession with buying things from Timu, which I wasn't going to buy from because Tom told me they were Chinese prisoners. But I don't see how they can all be. I suppose it's a big country. I bought this. Three fifty 50 gram balls and it said on the description there are 180 meters per 50 grams and it's Icelandic wool now it's not softy it is soft but you can feel it's not I don't think it's it's not super wash do you know what I mean you can feel you can feel it's wool I don't think it's going to be too difficult to wear at all um but it doesn't say anything on it you see it just says simib hand knitting yarn and on the outside of that package it says 100% wool I've gone back to the listing today and it says Icelandic wool and I'll show you the photograph of the options you could choose and you can see the one that I've chosen hopefully as being pink in the in the corner um, so they're not quite as the photo says but you know that when you buy and it does say self-striping, but I won't be making socks out of this. I don't know what I'm going to make. It just seemed like a bargain. I think I paid £7 for the three. So that's those are the same. They just started a different point in the stripe. But they're all the same colour. So that was from Timu. And I've made an, placed another order from Timu. Not the only thing I ordered, I ordered a few bits and pieces um, to go in giveaways and um, 
stuff. I like buying stuff. I haven't got any room for any more stuff, but I like buying it. Yeah, I've ordered some cotton, a cotton mix this time because, again, I just like the colours. So I need to stop looking at colours and just perhaps turn my phone to black and white and then I wouldn't be attracted to anything. <laughs> and that's it, really. That's incoming. So I haven't done an awful lot, even though I've been away for three weeks. But I'll tell you what I've been up to now. How long I've been talking. 26 minutes. And some of that was a mess at the beginning. Which you won't see. So starting from when I last saw you. I went to Longbridge with Mum. Uh, picked her up. And we went to Morrison's at Rubery. Looking for... No, we went to the charity shop first. To drop two bags off at the charity shop. Spitting with rain, uh, but we were able to park right outside. And then a bit further down the road, there's a big Morrison's, and Mum is looking for Branston's chickpea doll, and nobody sells it. So she popped in there, got me a couple of things, and then we went to Longbridge. We couldn't park again in the disabled parking spaces because there's a lot of people who've got disabled badges who can park anywhere, but they decide to take the wide space up, even though they don't need the wide space. So I wish people had stopped doing that. So I parked in a parent and child. And as my mum said, well, you're my child. Hmm. True. But they can hardly have me when they've got a couple. When we came back, we're getting back in the car. The couple facing me, which was also a parent and child, came back with a six balloon, you know, one of these helium ones, and looked like a few things for their child, or a child they knew there was six. Just the two of them, no child, because the kids were at school. And they'd still parked in parent and child. But I parked there because it was a wide, you know, it's wide, so you can get uh, at the get me out of the chair, car. Chair, you know. <sighs> Uh, and I went there, we had a cup of tea, uh, I had a tea cake, which wasn't very impressive. The lady burnt the first one, it was all right, but they're obviously cheap, they're not luxury tea cakes, although you'd think it's that from the cost. And then Mum said, I'm going to pop down to the Sainsbury's, which is next door, and I said, well, I'm going to go and look at the beauty and spend some money. So I spent some money on the Clinique store because that was the only lady there. <laughs> Usually there's an m and rep there and sometimes the girl on the Clinique. But I bought um, a nice gel eyeliner. I bought a, another chubby stick for my lips, a darker uh, pink, which I should have worn really today, brown colour. I don't even know what colour it is. I think it was pink. Just to keep in my handbag, because they're very, very easy to use. And they're not as heavy as a lipstick. I've got no lips anyway, so. And I also bought, bought a, a mascara. I found that mascaras that I've bought the last couple of times have been from number seven. And they are so heavy on my eyes. I can feel them all the time. And I don't like that. And to get them off, well, you know, you need an eye scraper. <laughs> And I don't want to be doing that. Uh, we popped into the food hall, got a couple of things, and then came home. Then the day after, I met Penny and Maggie round at the pub. And I gave Maggie the Rowan cotton wool that I'd bought last year in exchange for the BC Garn. Because I felt, you know, she's given so much to the podcast and she's given so much to both Penny and I in a clear out that she's been having because she can no longer knit but she can crochet um, and yeah gave her the cotton wool and she's already got a little bit of it so she's hoping to make something nice from that maybe it could be a blanket couldn't it Maggie? or it could be a cardigan or yeah we'll see and then that was on the Wednesday I think and then on the Friday Saturday I went back to the pub and I met my friend Jeanette. And if I remember, I'll put a photograph of Jean me and Jeanette when we worked together in the middle of Worcester 
when we were packing up to move from the centre of Worcester in Farrier House up to County Hall in 1985, I think. No, 1985 or 1986, I can't remember which one now. Yeah, I'll right, show you a picture of us. It's that other wall outside. Interestingly, yeah, County Hall's still shut, I think, from Legionella. Ah, oh, dear. And we had a good chat, put the world to rights. Jeanette's got rheumatoid arthritis. And, you know, she's... Yeah, she's got this ongoing condition that's hard to manage sometimes. And then on the Monday following that Saturday, I went to Mary Hill with Liz and Elaine. And I'm very sorry to report that we had no such shenanigans as we had time before this time. Apart from Liz, again, turning on the air dryer in the same toilet with her bum, and it still made her jump. Anyway. So, yes, we had a... Uh, what did we buy? Well, food, really. That was it. Went to Asda. Had a quick look around Bon Marsh, but I'm not so keen on that shop. I, I go in there, help my friend to shop because she likes it so I like their t-shirts but they didn't have anything I wanted um, and we went into yours and Liz tried a couple of things on and where else did we go uh, I can't remember but we had something to eat in Weatherspoons when we first got there with a double rum and cola as you do at 12 o'clock if it's noon it must be time to go to Weatherspoons that almost runs. And then um, later that week, uh, Tom's mum, Kath, and his sister, Carol, came and visited us for their annual trip. Tom was 60 last Friday, and they bought things to eat, and Tom's mum gave him his usual Marks and Spencer's voucher and four scratch cards, the big ones, and he's won £25 on those. So I filled them in and he just needs to go and cash them in. So that was good. It can be complicated working out what you've got to do on these things. They're quite big. you know. Anyway, we went outside, just scratch them. And uh, yeah, £25, so that's nice. Asked him what he's going to buy, but he hasn't got a clue. And then they stayed. They came on Friday lunchtime. Mum came over and had a piece of cake with us. But my mum's got sciatica at the moment and she's in a lot of pain. She's supposed to be in Wales at the moment, but they've postponed it till next week. But as far as I know, she's not getting any better. So we'll have to see. She said she's all right. I mean, she has to keep moving with something like that, don't you? Um, but it's, I don't think it's anything the doctors can help you with. You've just got to stop fizzing. Anyway. So Kath and Carol arrived and they left us Saturday night when they went back to the hotel and they drove home straight from the hotel, Premier Inn, uh, next to the motorway in Worcester. And I was exhausted and so were they, they were tired as well. We just chatted. Now we might have gone somewhere if it hadn't been so warm, but also we discovered a flat tyre on the car. So there wasn't much chance of getting that sorted over the weekend. Um, so we didn't go anywhere either, but next time they come, uh, I'm going to plan to go on the Seven Valley Railway, because that would be nice. Kath can't walk too far without it, without her aching, same age as my mum. So the railway seems like the ideal thing, because you just get on it and get off it, or you know, get off at one of the stations that's got a cafe and have a cup of tea or whatever. So that will be nice. I get on very well with Tom's mum. Well, I think I do. Tom's mum and sister. Um, and Tom cooked for us. And we had a nice time. But I was very tired. I'm very, very tired on the Sunday. Uh, and that's just talking. But I did have to get dressed properly. I had to cope with my own trousers and that in the bathroom. So I... That had an effect on me. I'm out of practice. And so, yeah, and that brings us up to date. I uh, was due to go to Merry Hill with Elaine today, but because we haven't got the car fixed, the tyre went down 
Tom's pumped it up. It hasn't gone down again. But I don't want to be on my own in case something happens to it. He tried to get it fixed. He went to three places in our little town this morning at about nine o'clock and none of them could or would do it. So we're going to get somebody to come to the house. You don't end up paying a lot extra, to be honest. Um, Tom asked one man to give him a quote for two back tyres. They've got plenty of wear on them. We don't do much mileage. And um, it was far more than we'd paid for two front tyres of medium quality less than a month ago, about a month ago. So, yeah. Uh, right, and that's it really. What am I going to do in the next few weeks? Well, I'm going to make some bags. I've got some life things to organise. Liz went into sketches while Elaine and I went into boots. And to cut a long story short, she was trying stuff on. Elaine found her a pretty pair of lilac shoes with like a false lace on. Lace on. And they both ended up buying the same pair. And for the first time in my life, because I've worn orthopaedic shoes or whatever you want to call them, for all my life, I had shoe envy. So I need to sort that out because if the company who make my boots for the NHS, I can get them privately through them. And it might be that I can have something nicer, something prettier, maybe. Because now I'm 63, nearly 64. It's time to just throw caution to the wind and not care. Well, not I've ever cared, really, but what people think. So, yeah, um, don't have anything else on the card. Need to go out with Tom. We don't go out very often to many places. Considering we lost Bertie, who was tying us to the home a bit, really. Um, because the weather's been rubbish and now it's too hot. Welcome to Britain. I've heard from some of you. Thank you very much for getting in touch. I had fully intended to go to the Festival of Quilts this weekend. Starts tomorrow. But it's a good job I didn't book any tickets because Mum's got sciatica. Uh, and I decided that if I went, I'd probably come home with a sewing machine and there's nothing wrong with my sewing machine. And if I went, I'd probably come home with a load of fabric and I've already got enough fabric. Thank you. Maybe next year or I'll get to the Malvern one in the spring, which is a bit nearer. So, yeah, so I won't be going to the Festival of Quilts, even though I really, 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 really would like to go. And I want to do some quilting in the next couple of weeks as well. Now I've finished this quite keen on my sewing machine at the moment so yeah that's enough of me frowning at you <laughs> these glasses because I'm looking at the top of the glassy try not to tip my head up so that happens I'm blurred I'm going to say you're blurred but I'm blurred watching me in the front facing camera so not an ultra long one this time it looks like it's going to be just over 30 minutes let me know what you've been up to um, if you want to bag off me uh, for the Stroke Association, it's going to be around 20 quid, I think, um, this year. Please let me know if you haven't already, and I will be getting on with them. I'd like to send them out in October. So, otherwise, and please don't feel obliged to, you've done more than enough over the years to help me um, make these donations, and I'm you know, pleased to do so. So, I'm going to go and take this top off before I melt. You take care of yourself. I hope you're doing all right if it's hot where you are. Don't we like to moan? Mm, yeah. And I will hopefully see you in a couple of weeks' time. You take care. You know where I am if I want to get in touch. Touched? Mm, that doesn't sound good. <sighs> There's an awful lot I could take out of these videos. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>